Okay, in this tutorial for part eight, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it so that our filter buttons will work when we click on them. Um, we're gonna do use similar concepts that we use for the slider, so we'll use the for each loop, and then we'll also use the query selector all to get all of our filter buttons. I have my project open, and I have my index, script, and styles files open. Um, remember that the very last line of code should always be curly bracket, comma, false, parentheses, semicolon. So whatever code we're writing, we're going to write above this. I, and um, the first thing that we want to do is we're going to actually make a function that will be called um, that will actually apply the filter button effects. So we can start that out by saying function. We're going to name this one filter button handler. We're going to pass it the parameter of event. And then you need your curly brackets. Hit enter. And I like to always add a closing semicolon after my closing curly bracket at the start so I don't forget. Inside of this, what we're going to do is we're going to be using the Cayman um, method to create a canvas of our image and then apply the filter effect. So we're going to tab in and we're going to say Cayman. This is going to be just like before on pound image. comma. So if we scroll up, we can see for the change slider handler, we have a similar setup. All right. After our comma, we're going to say a function. And then we're not going to pass it any parameters this time. This is important. So function, empty parentheses, opening curly, closing curly, closing parentheses, hit enter and I'm going to add my closing semicolon. So if you look at how our function is set up so far, we're going to put some actions inside of this Cayman method, um, but we have these two sets of closing brackets at the end. I know a lot of us have been getting confused about our, where our brackets go. So we want to clear off any previous filters that we've applied. So this dot revert false. Unless you want to be able to apply more than one filter, you want to do this. You can leave, make it so that you can still apply sliders, uh, or more than one slider, but just one filter um, by using this line of code. And then we actually want to apply the filter effect. So there are built-in filters for Cayman, and these built-in filters, the names of the filters actually match the IDs that we gave for each of our filter button. So um, we're going to use some code, but essentially what this is going to say is this vintage render, and it's going to render the vintage filter that's built in. Um, all right, so this square brackets event dot target dot ID closing bracket empty um, parentheses dot render, and this says get the when we click on the button get that button's ID. And we're going to put that into um, our Cayman method to render the filter. All right, closing semicolon. And we want to go ahead and save this work. And this is going to be our filter button handler function that will apply built-in filters using the Cayman API. All right, the next thing we need to do, step two, is we're actually going to use a query selector to get all of the filter buttons and store them in an array. So what we'll say is var filter buttons equals document dot get or sorry document dot query. I'm just so used to using get element by ID. Query selector all. We're gonna get them all by the class of filter because each of the filter buttons has a class of filter. So um, quotation marks dot filter and it will search our HTML document to find every um, HTML element that has this dot filter class. So if we come back to our HTML, we can see that the class is set to filter for our four filter buttons. And S to save the change. All right. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to use a for each loop to apply the filter button handler function whenever a filter button is clicked. So this is going to look similar to our for each loop 
that we did for the slider effects. However, instead of range dot on change, or for us it would be filter buttons dot on change, we're going to say filter buttons dot on click, and we'll call our change or our filter button handler function. All right, so we will say filter buttons dot for each function, and then we'll say filter button. And then we need our opening curly, closing curly, closing parentheses. I've hit enter. I'm going to go ahead and add my semicolon. And then inside of this function, what we're going to say is filter button. When a filter button is on click, clicked, we're going to call our filter button handler function. Okay, go ahead and save that and then come back and refresh your page in your app. We're ready to test now. Um, remember, you need to load an image in order to be able to apply a change. If you want to make that more intuitive to the person that's using your app, you can put an image here that just says you load an image to begin so that they know that they should do that. All right, I'm going to add puppy 2. I'm going to make sure my sliders still work. All right, and then I'm going to try my filter buttons. So we see vintage, Lomo, clarity, and orange peel. Great. And your reset button should still work. Perfect. So that's how you make your filter button handler um, functions work. If you want to be able to apply different effects, you can also try commenting out this dot revert false. Save that. Refresh your page. Make sure you load an image. So we could say Lomo, Gamma. But you'll notice that as I make changes, if I make something I don't like because I've put this dot revert false, I need to actually hit reset. So there's pluses and minuses to this option. I'm actually going to take that out. And that is part eight. Uh, remember that if you need to debug, you right click, click inspect, and then you want to go to console to find bugs and it will tell you which line it's on and then you can start debugging in your text editor.